Um, due to some somewhat popular demand, I'm going to show you how to take these carburetors apart uh, again with high definition this time. This is going to be a lot quicker than the last video just due to the fact that if you want the commentary from the other one, you can go ahead and watch that other video because uh, it's got about a half an hour worth of commentary. I'm going to take this bracket off here. I just hold it down with my hand. It's connecting bracket down here. Okay, still holding it. Center connecting bracket. Right. The right side comes up. Nothing under here, just a cover. You got a spring inside here. Spring. All right. And you get your diaphragms. Uh, the best way to get the diaphragms out: pull it up from the center here. Don't grab at the rubber part. Stick your finger inside here and just pull out. Uh, note the notch here. When you put these back at the end, they are directional. Um, and this little notch here uh, has a little groove that the rubber part has to sit in. So these just pull out, just be nice and careful. It's okay to leave them inverted like that. Okay, just a little circ clip in there. Just pinch it, circ clip, okay. We've got a little plastic piece. This just kind of holds everything down and then it falls right out here. So we've got a spring, I got a little washer. There's an E-clip on there, right there, and then there's a little donut. This right here is the uh, idle RPM adjustment. Right. These are the Pilot Air Jets. Do not remove them unless you are uh, knowledgeable of carburetors. This does not need to come out even when you're cleaning the carburetors. The hole is so big that there's no way it'll get clogged up. You can just spray air or carb cleaner straight through it. There's no reason to take it out. It's very hard to find a replacement and they are constantly stripped and destroyed when people try and take them out. So don't do it. Right at the bottom here, this is how you drain the, the flow bowls. Just this little guy. There's a washer and a brass plug. See, once your screws are all out, this just pulls straight off, okay? Don't touch the gasket, okay? Don't touch the gasket unless you have to touch the gasket. Don't worry about it. Just clean in there as best you can. Um, don't remove the gasket unless you have an overwhelming reason to, okay? Behind the main jet is a little washer. There we go. And then we got a little pilot screw here. It's a plug, rather. Plug. Just use a flathead to get that off. You see, these things are not very tight. They don't need to be very tight. Okay. Right here, this big one here with the washer and the big jet. That's the main jet. The pilot jet is in there. Uh, to get the pilot jet out, you're going to need a little uh, flat head, something like this. It needs to fit very closely. The threads are, uh, rather the head where the screwdriver sits in is very shallow. People strip this all the time. Don't over tighten it when you put it back in. There's no reason to. Okay, there you go. Pilot jet is out. Okay. Main jet is out. All right. If you want to get the emulsion tube out, just push on it from this side. Fall out. There you go. Emulsion it comes through the top, so you got to pull the diaphragm off to get that out. Um, okay, uh, let's cover some other things here. This is the um, sink adjustment screw right there. These are the idle mixture screws. Uh, on this particular model, these are fuel mixture screws. Um, turning them in all the way would um, block the fuel from coming in, so turning them out a lot will add more fuel at idle. Um, don't break the points of the needles off. You can if you over tighten it. Don't do that. That's all it takes when it's not jammed in there. Okay. Bing! Just a little uh, a pin. Okay. We got our float needle. All right. And I'm not going to take this off with. The seat of this can come off. There's a screen on the back of there that can get clogged, uh, so I would take it off over you. I believe that's a 10 millimeter. Let me check. Do it. Put some carb cleaner through the, all the holes and just blast the crap out of it with compressed air. That's the best way to do it. If you're doing this for the first time, I would also uh, remove the uh, idle mixture screw. The emulsion tube. There's a locator dowel. Call it a dowel inside here. Uh, and you'll see that the notch in here. That's what the dowel goes into, so it's got to be in right. And you know that this is the end that goes like this. The notch is gonna, the notch goes down towards this end. You got to put it in from the top. There you go. No 
I'll run all the way. I'm holding it with my finger from the back side. Okay. I'm going to grab the little copper washer. Okay. And now the main jet. Okay. Now that'll hold that emulsion tube in there. Now you might be saying, how much should I tighten this? Not much. Um, I just give it a, a decent, you know, I, once it requires effort, give it like a little bit more of a turn once it requires some effort. That's pretty much it. Um, it's not really going to fall out. Don't over tighten it. Now the pilot screw, pilot, pilot jet, rather, pilot screw, pilot jet, okay, goes in this way. So the smooth end goes in first, the threads go in last. So we're dropping the smooth end in, drop it in there. Your little screwdriver and just spin it around lightly don't mess up the threads on the top of that or not the threads the uh the area where the screwdriver sits in it's, it's very shallow so assuming you took this out here this is just a 10 millimeter you're just going to tighten that down you can give that a little more force just because this is a much beefier little assembly right there float needle the float needle goes in pointy end first okay so you take your float Float with one hand, put the pin through with the other. Use something like this. Plug, pilot hole. Doesn't require much force. Just give that a little bit of force. You need the plug. Okay. Tighten that up about the same amount that you would have tightened the main jet up. Not much. If you were to measure your float height, you'd measure it from the, the gasket seat to the top of the round part of that float, like there. And if you have the gasket on the seat here, you have to subtract the height of the gasket from the float height. Okay. So, there you go, a little finessing, oops, I'm going to take for these guys here, I'm going to take the drain plug, but I tend to tighten them about as, as tight as I can use with my thumb pushing on here. That's about what I do. And I go through and make sure I tighten them all. Now you take your little 10 millimeter for the float bowl. How much should you tighten that? Not much. Diaphragm. You want to check this thing for rips and tears, anything like that. That would be bad. All right. Pull the little cover off here. Be nice and gentle with it. You've got your locator little tab. So you stick this in so that the locator tab goes in its little recess. Pretty obvious. Then I kind of just run my fingers around it to make sure it's sitting on the lip correctly. Sometimes it'll want to go inside the lip. All right. When you have that in there, it should be nice and, and flush with the edge here. Okay. Now we just have our little spring. Spring just goes in, nothing special about it. Mine's a little bent, still works fine. Okay, get your cap. Okay, on the cap, you want the spring to go in the cap here. So you stick it on this side first. Then you make sure it's sitting on the cap. Then just hold it down, because the spring's gonna wanna push it up a little bit. And you can put Couple of your screws in here, the outside ones first, because remember that center bracket's going to have to go on before you can put the other ones. So you put the outside screws in first. If you have the other one off at the moment. So just get these started, and I wouldn't even snug them down too much until you get all of them in there, just to make sure everything locates first. So I just screw it in real light. Then I'm going to have to get the other side installed first, and then when that's done, this is the bracket that holds the throttle, and that is on backwards. <laughs> the way that you'll know it's on right, or correctly rather, don't say right or left, say correct. The way that you'll know it's on correctly is because the top of this bracket here is going to have to hook into this one here, which is the throttle pole that makes the butterflies go. So your throttle is going to sit in here, it's going to grab on this.